after Prosco is installed and the computer is restarted, you are ready to run Prosco for the first time. If you look at the desktop, you will find there is a shortcut called Prosco here, and just double click it. Like many other software packages, Windows may ask you for your permission the first time you launch the program. If this happens, just click OK or continue buttons. If your Windows firewall is enabled, you may come across this dialog box that asks you to unblock the program. If you come across this box, make sure that you click unblock and it will happen twice. So you click unblock and unblock again. And depends on your operating system, it may ask you to allow access. So the name of the buttons could change depending on your operating system. So if you click unblock or allow access, then ProScore will work properly. The reason is that um, there is a light scoring and wireless remote function on ProScore that requires the network connection. So if your Windows firewall is interfering with these functions, they won't work properly. So make sure that you click unblock or allow access when you come across those boxes. Now, you are ready to run ProScore. So click the snooker scoreboard button and just enter, enter, and you enter the scoreboard like this, which is pretty easy. So I'll give you a very quick run through of the program. So start the frame clock by pressing the C button and the clock runs and the game started. Now, there are two players, but only one player is on a table at any one time. That's why you have to switch player when the active player is on the table. To do that, you just press the enter button. And you see how the bounding box changes? So it depends on who is on the table. You press enter to that person. The reason is that you have to add pawns on the scoreboard if they put a ball, say. So if you press one, it will enter the red ball. So four for the brown and another one pawn for the red ball and so on. So you can keep the game running like that, very simple. When he finishes his break and the next player comes back to the table, you press enter like that. So it's very easy. Now, if you don't want to add pawns after every pot, what can you do? Um, like in many casual games, you add pawns after a break is finished. And if that's what you want to do, there is a way to do it. If you press the B button for break, so B and then the, num um, and then the pawns for the break. So let's say it's 23 and press enter. 23. And 23 will be added to the scoreboard. So you have a choice whether you want to add the pawns after every pot or enter the pawns after the brick is finished like that very simple and when the frame is finished what you have to do is to press the win frame button which is W and then you press the green button to continue to finish the frame so the green confirmation button is Three because three is with green boys, so you press three and it will finish the frame. And you see that um, one frame has been awarded to player number two, and the clock has been reset. So you start the next frame by pressing the C button again and wait until you have a ball spotted. And in that case, you add the pawns again for the second frame. So something like that is um, it's pretty easy to use and uh, there are so many more features that I can't cover in this video. So please refer to my other videos for more detailed instructions. Thank you. Bye bye.